everyone that took a PPP loan is on notice. Let's talk about it. Hey, it's your girl Frida, owner of Mobile Taxes. Let's get into it. So a lot of people say, you know, the biggest regret I made is not getting that PPP. Don't let that be your biggest regret because right now, in the state of Georgia, they are stepping on their necks to the point where for the people that created businesses around the time that the PPP came out, the news reporters are knocking at their door to try to find out where is the business owner or who owns this business name. Now, mind you, there has to be an owner name attached to that EIN that was filed with that banking information. The idea that the IRS was closed during that time, they are working hard together with these banks. They don't care if it's $3,000. They want their money back. You will receive jail time. So what is what do you have to do about it? You got to make sure your paperwork is lined up. You better make sure you file that um, business that you created with that PPP in time because if not, then um, I don't know what your Georgia prison system looks like but that'll be you. If you have any questions, make sure you like, share, and follow for more. In Georgia alone. Justin, all the data on who receives these loans is publicly available. We've been looking through it and looking at some of these companies that are registered with the Secretary of State and don't have an online presence. We wanted to find them and ask them a simple question. What does your company do? Turns out that wasn't so simple. I'm trying to reach Money Ain't a Problem Entertainment. Oh, Alexa. okay. Is that you? No, it isn't. He's at work. We went to this Gwinnett County home looking for a company that received more than $22,000 in federal Paycheck Protection Program payments. We couldn't find Money Ain't a Problem Entertainment registered with the Georgia Secretary of State or active online. He received a PPP loan and we can't find any record of the business existing. So I'm just trying to understand what it is. Oh, see, I don't know. We dug through thousands of pages of PPP data and found that more than 553,000 PPP loans were handed out in Georgia, totaling more than $24 billion just in Georgia. But we know that tens of millions of dollars of that money here in Georgia went to fake companies trying to steal your tax dollars. I think it's a righteous use of your federal tax dollars to go after these people. David Estes is the U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of Georgia. You're sending the message here, if you cheat the American taxpayers, we're going to find you. And we will. He says it doesn't matter how small the dollar amount of the potential fraud. We're going to look at every single case. Uh, some of the smaller cases have led us to bigger cases. This is one of those cases Estes is prosecuting. Decula resident Ashley Parker allegedly submitted more than two dozen fraudulent applications for COVID relief, adding up to $2 million. Prosecutors charged she spent part of those illegal proceeds on plastic surgery, including breast augmentation and liposuction. Hi, it's Justin with Channel 2. I'm trying to reach Ashley. Hello? Get off my porch, man. If I put something on both of y'all, we tried to track down Parker at her Decula home, luxury cars, a Mercedes, and a Lexus in the driveway. The person who answered the doorbell called me several names we can't say on television. Is Ashley here? No, your mama here. No, I don't think so. I'm looking for Ashley Parker. Mr. Smith, it's Justin Gray with WSB. It was nearly two years ago that I tracked down to Bronx Smith at his Gwinnett County business, Market Yourself LLC. At the time, he maintained he never stole PPP funds as a federal indictment alleged. Did you do everything by the book? Yes, sir. Why would they indict you? I'm not doing the camera, please. That's disrespectful. But Smith has now entered a guilty plea, and in its sentencing memorandum, the U.S. attorney is asking for a 21-month prison term. So what about money and a problem entertainment? No one associated with money and a problem is facing criminal charges, but we still can't find any signs of a business or employees earning paychecks. The woman who answered the door promised to go get the owner of money and a problem to answer our questions. So we waited and waited. Okay, he's not here. We never heard back from Money and a Problem, but this summer, President Biden signed bills extend. She knew she was going to jail. Instead of using that money to invest and make some more money, she crashed out and just bought a bunch of luxury. She knew she ain't had that much time left. <laughs> she crashed out, period. But let's take it back to 2020. In the wake of the COVID-19 outbreak, numerous Americans lost their jobs, resulting in a significant rise in unemployment applications. This also led to some people attempting to exploit the system for benefits they were not eligible for. A financial investigator with the Department of Economic Opportunity, 
informs a detective in the city of Delray Beach that four people had reported they received unemployment claims by employees who were still currently employed. An investigation was then initiated, as they believed they were filing based on the work status of a secondary employment. As for Destiny Harris, she allegedly told the detectives that she did not file as she was working full-time, but after police accessed her bank records, it was found that she had received $19,975. Harris scheduled to meet with the detective on January 2023 but failed to show. She was contacted several times after and the phone would go straight to voicemail. A letter was then sent to her listed address, however the letter was returned as undeliverable. Okay, so there's a warrant for your arrest. Okay. Oh my gosh. So that's what that's what we're here for. So oh, I would okay. like to explain more to you and actually sit down and have a conversation with you. Um, but in the meantime, we do need to take you back with us. And because you have your mom on the phone, that's why I'm explaining this to you, mm -hmm. um, so that she knows what's going mm -hmm. on. Also, okay. Okay. All right. Um, she won't tell you what the warrant's for. Can I ask you like a ballpark question of how long do you think I'll be sitting in there? We don't know, Destiny. If, 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 if there's a warrant, it could be there and we don't know. But, but did the kids see the... Yes, Mom, they saw them, so they're okay. not stupid. Okay. Did you believe you were receiving these loans legitimately? 17 members of the Broward Sheriff's Office, which include both BSO deputies and detention deputies, released from the federal courthouse in Fort Lauderdale after being indicted on charges that include wire fraud after federal investigators said they fraudulently applied for and received funds from the Paycheck Protection Program, or PPP, loans. Bonds were set. They're being released. Uh, nobody, as far as I know, is being detained. And uh, we'll take it from there. We'll be back in court. Attorney Brian Silber represents three of the defendants, some of whom have either been suspended or placed on leave pending the outcome of the investigation. I can't comment on the nature of the case. While the charging documents do not allege that any of the defendants committed to charge offenses in the course of their official duties, this does not in any way diminish the seriousness of what the defendants are alleged to have done here. Sheriff Gregory Tony said he first learned of the crimes in November of 2021, prompting him to investigate all 5,500 of his employees, including himself and other top brass. Of the 17 indicted, seven BSO deputies and one sergeant in law enforcement, and eight detention deputies and one sergeant in corrections. I hate to see that knowing some of the individuals and seeing the names on that list that's being indicted, indicted some of them were good officers. But you're only as good as the last act and conduct that you execute. We learned the defendants involved received tens of thousands of dollars, and while the investigation has proved that some of whom were investigated did have legitimate businesses, at the very least, the 17 now facing federal charges allegedly did not. If you're going to be participating in criminal activities, we don't want you in this profession. And while 17 BSO employees have been indicted, we are told that this investigation does continue and there could be more indictments to come. We'll be sure to stay on top of this. For now, outside of BSO headquarters near Fort Lauderdale, Roy Ramos, Local 10 News. Nobody is above the law. They are going after every single person that has taken out a PPP loan. And it's public record. You can just go online, type in PPP loan list, uh, type in someone's name, and you can see whoever got the loans. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Leave a like, hit the subscribe button. We'll see y'all next time.